Hello, I'm Mr. Richmond, and this is your Unit 3.1 lesson summary. Unit 3.1 will be on using linear regression to model data and make predictions. Uh, what is linear regression? Well, linear regression is the process of modeling the relationship between two variables in a data set by producing a line of best fit. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if I have a discrete set of data points, and they look like they're basically making a line, forming a line, obviously they're a little bit spread out. Um, linear regression is the act of trying to come up with a line that could best represent them. And then hopefully I could use that line to guess where these points might be out in the future, somewhere I don't know answers to. Um, when we do that, we, we need a correlation coefficient because depending on how spread out that data is, that line, that equation we come up might not work real well. So we have something called a correlation coefficient for that. It indicates how closely the data forms a straight line, and we represent that with R. R equals 0.9, R equals 0.8, numbers like that. If R is positive, it means there's a positive correlation, so the points are moving upwards from left to right. If your R value is negative, then the points are moving down from left to right, your scatter plot. Um, if the absolute value of R is close to 1 or closer to 1, so these would be numbers like 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0.85, that means that the data is fairly linear. It's almost forming a straight line. And if you get farther away from that, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, that means it's really not a good set of data for linear and that the equation will be farther off. Um, so how do you know if it's a good fit or not, if it's a good um, tight data set? My thing is kind of like a percentage on a test. If, if your R value is a 0 0.9, um, 0.95, you got an A. So that's a pretty good fit. It's a strong fit. 0.8s, that's like a B. It's okay. It's a, it's a good fit, but it not, not real great. You get in the Cs, now you're, it's not as good, not really acceptable. You get down to the 0 0.6, 0 0.5, that's a D or F. You wouldn't really want to use that because it's not real accurate. It's my, my way of remembering it. Now, this is a heavy uh, graphic calculator section. You do have to have one to be able to do this. So hopefully, if you were in class, you will remember a lot of the uh, methods that we use. I'm going to do my best to show it here on the video, but I would suggest that at home, if you don't have your own graphing calculator, that you have this open with another window that you can look at that is an online graphing calculator, and you can try entering some of these functions. Now, if you can find an actual emulator for TI-84 so that you have the same buttons, it'll go a little smoother. Um, otherwise, you kind of got to pause and try to look around at how to find that. So. For my example, I'm going to just use this data and we'll do everything off this. So it's the years in the past year for a teacher and the average math score that they've had in those classes. So data that would work real well with me here. So what I want to do is, is enter this data first into my graphing calculator. So how do I do that? Well, to enter data, you're going to press the stat button and then the edit button. And that will allow you to enter data. Now, when I enter data, I have to make sure I make one of them the independent or the input and one of them the dependent, the output. Typically in a table, the independent is the first column, the dependent or the output is the second column. But you can think back to uh, how we determine those variables. Time is typically independent. And you always want that independent to be your L1 column and your dependent to be your L2. So at that point, I would actually just enter it into my calculator. Probably not going to be able to see that real well, but I pressed stat. And then I press enter and chose edit. And then I'm going to enter this data in L1, L2. Um, now, there's a couple ways to do this. And so depending on how big the numbers are, you may want to use different data points. This tends to be the case where people give these years, 2005, 2006, 2007. But these are big numbers. And so when I'm working on this and it's trying to calculate a slope, it can get really ugly. So a lot of people change it. And they go, you know what? Let's just do years since 2004 and just call this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And as long as I understand that and I, when I plug in an equation, I use these type of numbers instead, you can get a nice easier equation. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to enter it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And for L2, my average is 78.91, 77.8. 79.67, and now I have my data entered into the calculator for L1 and L2. 
From here, I want to now look at the data. I want to see the scatter plot. I just want to make sure I entered it correctly. Um, and I'll kind of copy what this graph roughly looks like. But I need to think about the domain and range now. Where should my data be? Because the graph calculator is only going to graph and see what you, you, know, you tell it to. So for my domain, it's really 0 to 8. So I can make my x min 0, my x max 10, and that should really make everything fit. So how do I adjust it? Well, I'm going to go to Window, press the Window button, and then I'll get a menu where I can decide what my x min is, my x max, my x scale, which I'm going to skip because it's not real important for now, and my y max. So these are the four I'm going to look for and I want to make sure I have the right value. So I look, I'm going to be going all the way up to 8, so an x min of 0 would be appropriate, an x max of 10 goes above 8. I just kind of like to choose a nice, easy, even number. Um, now, what do you want to do here? It depends. You could start at 0, but none of your data really even hits till 78, so there's not a reason to start that low. So what we typically do is we do a little squiggle inside and say we're going to start somewhere else. Let's start at 78 because we never go below 78. Oh, I'm sorry, we do. We go to 77. So let's start at 77%. And we go up to 85, but we could go higher. If you look at the trend, it looks like it is going higher than 85. So I'm actually going to let this thing go all the way to 100 because that's the highest I could get percentage-wise, most likely. So my Y min would be 77 my Y max is 100, but again, it's up to you how wide of a range you want to do there. So on my calculator again, I'll try my best to see if this will show up. I press window, and then I can set this. X min, 0, X max, 10. Y min, I said, would be 77. Y max, 100, and I have everything set. Now the problem is if you hit graph here, it might not graph. You need to make sure plot 1 is highlighted. So I press Y equals highlight plot one, then hit graph. And now I can see my data points. What's that look like roughly? It looks like that roughly. Because I have a pretty wide range. Now if I chose a lower Y max, something like more in the 88 range, this would spread out a little better, maybe look a little nicer. but. If I draw my trend line, I can see it is going up. So it should have a positive correlation, and I should be able to come up with an equation to represent this. So how do I do that? Well, now that that's in, I need to calculate that equation. So I'm going to press STAT again, CALC. I'm going to scroll over one arrow and choose LINREG, which stands for linear regression. So again, Again, I don't know if this is showing up for you or not, but let's try. Stat, scroll over one to calc, down to linreg, the fourth one. Now it's going to show it on a regular screen, a blank screen. You press enter, and it actually runs it for you. And so what mine tells me is, hey, y equals ax plus b, because they're going to try to make this a linear function. A would be my slope. You're usually seeing it as m, but this calculator does this as an a. Just make a note of that. And then it tells you what A is. It says A is 0 0.97142857714. And that B is 76.46107143. Got it. So I want to write the function. I want to write the equation. So the average math score, which if we're writing as an equation, we could use Y. I'm going to get us back in the habit of using F of X. So I'm going to say f of x equals, and I can plug in the a and b value into this form. Uh, a would be my slope, b would be my y-intercept, and I'm going to probably round because these are a little outrageous. So let's go 0 0.97, I'm going to round to two decimal places, times x plus 76.46. And what I have now is a linear equation. That is the equation for the line of best fit that I roughly drew here. And what that gives me is now is an equation that I can plug input values into to find rough output values for. So it has a lot of use for me. Now you'll notice though I don't have a correlation coefficient. And that's because you have to press some extra buttons uh, to make a correlation coefficient um, happen. And you need to turn diagnostics on to do that. So if when you type this all you get is this information, you need to press. And so let's... 
pull this so we can write that. Okay, second, zero. That's going to take you to a catalog menu, second, zero. And from there, I can scroll down. I'm just going to keep scrolling down until I see the phrase diagnostic on. So it goes relatively in alphabetical order. So I'm going to seize now D. And there's a diagnostic off and a diagnostic on. I'm going to choose diagnostic on. I'm going to click that. It's going to go to a blank screen. I'm going to press enter again. It'll say done. So now turn it on. And now, unfortunately, I do have to press stack calc and reg again to get it to spit out the equation again. I'll do that now, stat, calc, linreg, run it. My equation is the same. It's gonna give you the same stuff for y equals a and b, but then it's gonna give you an r squared and then just an r value at the very bottom. That's the one you wanna use. R, which I'm gonna round, it's 922126 I'm gonna round it to just 0 0.92. So that is my correlation coefficient. So what does it all mean? Well, like we said, the correlation coefficient is positive, which means my data is relatively positive, which is what we had read up here about it. And it's 0.92, which I interpret as like a 92%. Okay, if I had a student that got a 92%, I'm gonna trust their answer fairly well. They seem to know what they're doing. So to me, a 0.92 is a good. It means it's a strong relationship, which means this is a pretty good predictor for what's actually happening in the situation, which, mean, which means if you ask me, what do you think that their average math grade was in 2014, two years later? Based on the trend of this data and the answer I get by my equation, I have a pretty good guess as to what that'll be. Doesn't mean that's what will actually happen in the future, but at least that supports my, my data. So let's try that now. Um, I'll rewrite our equation, just so we have it to work with. f of x equals 0.97x plus 76.46. And let's just see what someone's, uh, what the average mass score might be for the year 2014. Now right off the bat you might think, great, let's go plug in 2014. Now you have to remember though, that's not the in numbers that we input. 2014 down here is the years since 2004. So if I go down, nine would belong to 2013, 10 would belong to 2014. So the actual input I'm plugging in is 10. So I'm going to find what f of 10 is now and see what answer we come up with, see if it makes sense. So plug in 0 0.97 times 10 plus 76.46. And again, depending on how accurate I want to be, I could use the original full equation without rounding. But I mean, that's a quite a bit of work. So it's kind of a judgment call on you there. 0.97 times 10 plus 76.46. I can use my calculator if I want at that point, or do it in my head or on the paper, is 86.16, and that represents a percent. So according to my equation, I could predict or estimate the score in 2014 to be 86.16%. Okay? And looking at the trend of the table, that would be a reasonable guess. Okay, and that's ultimately what we need you to be able to do with this chapter is take data, plot it, run a linear regression, get a line of best fit, so that you have an equation that you can use to make some predictions as far as that. Um, I could also use this a little bit backwards. Assuming that this happened, and you got to remember that a calculator doesn't know the situation, so it can give you weird answers that don't make sense, so you as the human need to be able to come in and interpret that. Um, I wonder when their average would be 100%. Now that'd be really hard to happen, every kid getting it 100% right, but you would imagine this might slow down. But if it followed this trend, I wonder where that'd be. Well, now I want the output to be 100%, so I plug in 100 for the average math score. Let's see when that would happen, what year that would finally reach that average. I rewrite the equation, and I solve. This time I'm solving for the input x, because I plugged in the output. Okay, I would take 100, Subtract 76.46 from it to both sides. I end up with 23.54 equals 0.97x. And now it's just a matter of dividing by 0.97 to see what x value would make that happen. And I'm getting around 24.26, I'm just gonna say 24.3. And I have to think about what that represents. Well, X was years since 2000, 
four. So roughly, when I round down, I could say 24, it'd be close to 100%, wouldn't be exactly it. Or I could round up 25 and that'd be the final year they should hit that or go above. So really it's about 25-ish years past the year 2004. So I, couldn't, I wouldn't expect my class to have 100% average falling this trend until 2029. Now obviously by 2029, Things have changed a lot. You're teaching it a little different. It's a different topic. So it doesn't really apply to the situation. It wouldn't really fit with what I'm doing. But answers kind of close within this range and a few years after might actually be useful data. And so um, that's the kind of stuff we're going to look at in the later sections. Hopefully this helped you out. Good luck.